Hey, everybody, and welcome to another digital edition of Intentional Talk. It's Millar, it's Rose, and look, we are joined by baseball royalty, the 15-time All-Star, the Wizard of Oz, the Hall of Famer, Ozzy Smith. Oz, good to see you. How you doing, man? All right. How you guys doing? I see you got your beards going. They look good, man. They look good. <laughs> White. <laughs> 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 you got a Santa Claus oh yeah, working. I got a little uh, bit too. Oz, we got a lot of ground to cover with you because we do want to talk some golf. I know Millar's going to slide that in there because you got another oh, big yeah. golf match coming your way later today. But I want to start now that baseball's back and we're, we're super excited. You have an interesting perspective because in 1981, there was a work stoppage. You guys were gone for several weeks. And then your first game back was actually in the middle of August at the 1981 All-Star Game. So how long did it take for you to kind of ratchet it up again? Well, you know what? I, I don't think you get that far away, Kevin. I think that when you love what you do, you, you do it. You know, you, you continue to stay as close as you possibly can, you know, with not having live action, live pitching and all that stuff, you know. So we were excited about getting back and, and stuff. So it wasn't hard getting back in the swing of things at all. Well, as I mentioned, your first game back was the 1981 All-Star Game. It was the first of your 15 Midsummer Classics. What is the greatest memory? Because that was a star-studded lineup and team that well, you were playing with and against. Well, it was those guys, uh, Mike Schmidt, uh, Tim Raines. Uh, who else? Uh, was it Johnny that hit a home run? Uh, <clears throat> you know, that was back when the, when the National League was winning All-Star Games. I, don't, I can't remember the last one they won. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, back then, I think we took a, we took a lot of pride in, in going out there and performing and, uh, you know, just to be a part and be on the stage with, with the game's best, you know. And that's why I've always, um, I've always uh, took it as an honor to be a part of an all-star game because you're on the stage with the game's best and um, you want to perform at, at the highest level. And uh, that was fun coming back. That's awesome. Now, MLB Network's most recent episode, Sound of Baseball, was all about Jack Buck. So if you haven't seen some yeah. of those moments, you're going to have to check that out. But 1985 NLCS, the homer. Talk to me about yeah. that. Well, you know, when I got up that morning, uh, Kevin, sometimes you never know how the day's going to end. And I had no idea that the day would end the way that it did. You know, we were facing Fernando Valenzuela, who, you know, has always been super tough because he never lets you see his eyes. You know, he's always looking up <laughs> when, he, when he's throwing, That's you know. And when you, and, yeah, when you're hitting, you know, you want to see the guy's eyes. You want to look him right in the eyes. But with him, you never could, you know. So he had that great screwball and, and stuff. But uh, he and Bob Forrest battled, and I think Bob got knocked out in the fourth or fifth inning. And Ken Daly came in and did a hell of a job at holding it, mm -hmm. holding it close. And, and I think Jeff Lottie got up got us out of a, a couple tough jams and stuff. And then uh, it gave us the opportunity. As you know, you know, you have to have guys who can come in there when you need them and, and, and hold the opposition down. And they came in in some tough situations and were able to hold them down and give ourselves a chance at home. And uh, uh, in that situation, I was just trying to get the ball down in the corner. The Dodgers have always pitched me hard in. And in, uh, in 1985, I had uh, – gone with Mackie Shillstone uh, for as far as training was concerned I'd gone down to New Orleans and he took Michael Spinks from a light heavy to a heavy weight and he's working with Serena now but uh, uh, you know the thing that I talked to him about was I wanted to get stronger without losing my mobility and my flexibility mm -hmm. and so through through weight training and and uh, nutrition you know I got into where I could pull the ball a lot more I could back the defense up a little bit and and learn to hit the ball down in the corner. And all I was trying to do was get myself in scoring position there. And it just, uh, you know, uh, the technique and stuff was there. He supplied the power and, and, and the, the rest is history. And, and I was very, very fortunate to have Jack Buck on the call and Smith Corks one down the line, could go, could go, go crazy, folks, go crazy. <laughs> the Cardinals have won the game by the score of three to two on a home run by the Wizard. <laughs> 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 I got goosebumps. Come on, baby. Now, you know, you know it, it, when I look back on it now, it's as if I've hit 500 home runs. You know, you've heard that so so many times. But to have Jack on the call and and actually Jack felt that he had he had missed it. But guys like he and Vince Scully are those people mm -hmm. that are very very special in what they do, and and their timing is impeccable. Mm -hmm. And Jack and and Vinny have had some great postseason moments. And, you know, Jack, that, that was a great call. But the other one that, that was just as good was um, I can't believe what I just saw. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we'll see you tomorrow night, you know, which yes. Joe was able to come back and, 
and, and replicate. And I think it was 2011. So, um, you know, it's, it's been a great ride for me here in St. Louis, you know, in such a, a storied baseball town and to have had uh, Jack Buck. I grew up in L.A. listening to Vin Scully, and then I come over mm -hmm. to St. Louis and I get to listen to Jack Buck and, uh, and stuff. And it's, it was just great. It was great. That's great memories. Um, you know, you still live there. So how yeah, often I'm still here. When, when we're not in a pandemic, how often will you be walking down the street and somebody will just go, go crazy, folks, and just keep walking? Oh, yeah. That's every day of my life, you know. Uh, we, you know, we, we play we played a sport where you create memories that last a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And it, it's great when fans come up to you. And I do cameos and stuff now uh, and, and stuff. And they, they always reference that, you know, uh, at the end of it, can you say go crazy? You know, so I've gotten to where now, you know, uh, when the request comes, sometimes I, I just, uh, I, I repeat that for them as I just did for you guys. And they love it, man. They love it. Uh, you know, and, and people here in this town talk about growing up on Cardinal baseball, going to the games with their dad, their grandfather, grandmother and stuff. So it's just a, this was just a great baseball town and, and I'm able to go to the store and stuff. And some people are surprised when they see me, they, you know, they give me that look when you walk by and you go, what's that? I go, yeah, uh, I'm willing to give you. How you doing? How you doing? I'm willing. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so, so it's good, man. It, it, it's fun. It's a, it's a great, it's a great town. It's a great town to raise a family and, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad that I had the opportunity to come here and play. So good. I want to get to something now that was awesomeness. And another thing that people remember you as, and that's the backflip. Now we did our research. Uh -huh. We heard you did that backflip <laughs> for the first time. Fan Appreciation Day with the Padres. And I want a two-part yeah. question. One, the first time you ever tried to do this, and where was that? And I know you ex executed that, obviously, at the, uh, at the Appreciation Day with the Padres. So talk to me about the backflip. Well, um, back in 1978, my rookie year, well, let me back up. Growing up in Southern California, I lived across the street from, a, from a, where they used to build pallets. Mm -hmm. So there was always plenty of sawdust around. So we used to go over and tumble in the sawdust. And then on Thursdays, we'd go to what they call a family fun center where they had trampolines in the ground. Mm -hmm. So when you're a young kid, man, growing up in South Central Los Angeles, hey, man, you... You, you take any dare, you take any dare you can get, okay? So um, we would dare, I, they would dare me, I dare you, you can't do that. Now, I'm gonna tell you how dumb I was as a kid. Now, you remember the, the, the fence that was probably about uh, six feet tall that had this, the spikes on it, the metal mm -hmm. fence? Yep. They dare me to jump over that. You know, so now if you don't make it, Kev, if you don't make it, it ain't pretty. No. It ain't pretty. No. So you better. You better be sure that you you got some some hops. <laughs> so it was it was from doing that and tumbling in the sawdust and and on the trampolines. And then uh, after practice, we had to run two miles. Now uh, the Yakult Swallows, which is a Japanese team, used mm -hmm. to come over and train with us in Yuma. And they man, them dudes ran all day long, you know. So for some reason, I guess they thought that you know <laughs> that's the way you get in shape. You run two three miles after you finish playing. We had to run a couple miles, and I was never big on running long distances. So I was at the back of the pack, and Gaylord Perry, Dave Winfield, Raleigh Fingers, they all gave me a hard time about being the young guy being at the back of the pack. So, you know, I sprint, I did my round out back, and I said, how you like me now? And so <laughs> Gene Tennis, who was also a teammate, had girls that were involved in gymnastics, and he wanted me to show them that I could do it during the season, which I was never able to do during the season. So the final day of the season, when everybody was at the ballpark, he thought it would be a good idea for me to do it going out to my position. So I did it. People liked it so much. They asked me to do it opening day the following year, and a, and a trademark was born. There you go. That, Thank that's God you it. over that gate. <laughs> I, I did. <laughs> over that fence, man, because if you don't make it, oh, uh, boy, they're going to spend some time in the hospital. <laughs> I love it. All right, in the minute we have left, we know that your, your true sports passion these days is golf. So if you and Millar teed it up right now, who is giving whom shots on each side? Well, you shots. know what, Kevin, you know, Kevin's played with all of the big stars and stuff, you know, he played under the, you know, under the pressure of having to make that 10 foot putt with, with, with big guys looking on, you know, so uh, he'd have to give me a couple strokes or either side now. Because I'm sure he's hitting it pretty good. He was hitting it pretty good back then, but I'm sure he's gotten a lot better. 
Hey, you know what's funny, Chris? I'm going to be honest with you right now. If you were a gambling man, Rosie, mm -hmm. you put your money on the wizard, period. And it's <laughs> Uncle Kevin can drive the ball in the fairway, but he has a tough time scoring. That's the difference. The wizard that's can all, score. Hey, Kevin, that's all of us, man. That's all of us. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, you know, it's the toughest thing in the world because now it's your nerves, man. Your, 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 your nerves get bad. That's why uh, 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 golfers – you know, late in their career, they they, they can't yeah. play on tour anymore because the nerves are shot, man. God, yeah. y'all have faced that slide, that curveball. My nerves <laughs> gone. They gone. <laughs> well, I was, you are, are always been so classy and so smooth. We appreciate the time today. And uh, go, go beat the guy you're playing on the golf course today. Go go tell okay, us something good I'm next on, time to see you. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. You guys take care, man. Be safe out there. You got it. Go get it. We'll see everybody next right. time on IT presented to you by Toro.